All right, so my mouse should be blanking. I can't tell when I'm recording here, but anyway, we're just going to call this video one, see how it works out. Uh, so this, hi Linda, so this is the location that you were showing me. Uh, this must be the marina. And what we're looking at, this is a dark sky map. Right now, if I click on the screen, uh, it's going to give me the information here. It's saying it is a class 4. And then if we look over here, uh, we're looking at green. It doesn't really give you a, a class number. But anyway, green is right down the middle. White uh, is highlight pollution. Black is very dark. You're right in the middle, right in here. So that's not that's not too bad. Uh, let's see. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, and you'll kind of see. Now I'm gonna keep going. So we got Dallas. Come on. Okay. So we got Oklahoma City up here. Got Dallas down here, and you can kind of see you were shooting around here. If you were actually to shoot east or north, northeast, you're kind of shooting towards the dark. Um, and then if you shoot here, you're going to have a little bit more light on the horizon. Let's see if I can get back in where I was. There you are. So anyway, there's a the marina. And you'll basically, what you'll want to do is you'll just set up and uh, do a couple test shots. And I'm guessing you're going to want to try ISO 3200 for 20 seconds for a single image. Obviously, it'll have to be on a tripod. Um, now, if you're going to try to shoot the Milky Way, you're going to want to wait till March. Uh, you could probably do it in February. But you're basically going to want to point your camera straight over the marina. And in the springtime, the Milky Way is going to be basically to your east. And then as summer goes, the Milky Way is going to roll down to the south, even southwest, towards the, you know, the fall before it disappears again. But early on, point it over there, see what happens. Um, yeah, and then I'll go over the advanced technique later. It's basically, basically the advanced technique is you put your camera on a tripod and instead of just shooting one image that you like, you shoot 15 or 20 images, same exposure, um, you know, on a tripod so nothing moves. They're basically identical images shot right after each other. I don't know if you have a, a timer or an intervalometer that you can put on your camera. That way it'll just, you know, you can tell it to take 20 images consecutively, 20 seconds each. Um, it's just a little easier than waiting and pushing the button each time. Um, you, can, you can get one on eBay for about $15. I buy the cheap ones because uh, I have a tendency of dropping them, stepping on them in the dark, you know. Uh, that's I kind of go with the lower end equipment uh, you know you want to make if you're gonna buy a lens you know buy a good lens um, but some of that disposable stuff that might get broken if you can <laughs> get by with the cheaper stuff I definitely do it uh, so yeah basically you know I can I'll give you more details on the actual uh, uh, settings and then like I said I'll process it for you I'll just tell you exactly what to do and uh, that way you don't have to go and get Photoshop right away because you actually got to buy a subscription now to Photoshop unless you can find somebody who has an old disk and you can install it. Um, but anyway, I don't know what this is here. You see that? I don't know what that is. Um, but it looks like you got a nice dock right here too. You could even shoot, you know, shoot up this way. Let's see. Yeah, looks like a public access or something there. 
but you get that nice dock you still have the road in your background get some car trails going down it um, and you could you could play around too I mean you can go I don't know where you can all get to here uh, you know go around the lake just kind of looking for another access here so you got something here another public access but you're gonna be shooting at I mean it might be kinda neat you'll have a lot of lights you know on the other horizon um, I don't know what you got here now too guess it depends on what this bridge looks like maybe you can find something in it looks like you got some uh, unless that's a railroad looks like that yeah, that's a railroad so be careful on that one. Railroads, you know, are sweet, but I'm not recommending you uh, go chasing trains. I guess. But yeah, there you go. That was definitely a railroad. Okay, moving on. Getting sidetracked. It's hard for me to keep a train of thought while I'm staring at a screen here, looking around. But anyway, yeah, that's what you're looking at. So basically, you're gonna have a little darker skies, and I don't know. If you're ever out road tripping, I mean, if you look right here, and this is dark here. I don't even know what that is, but we're dark. You're dark over here, and dark over here. Anyway, what's also nice though is even though you're in some light pollution around here, that light pollution can really it'll light up the horizon for you. You can get some great silhouettes of trees and you're dark enough you know you're in green and with your camera um, I mean I would try 3200 you can go as high as 6400 I just don't know what kind of noise you get but then that's when I'm gonna have you shoot extra images because that actually will clean up the image really nicely and I'll have fun because I honestly I, ha I haven't processed uh, images from a crop sensor like this before but anyway, I'm going to get out of here. But that's your dark sky. I overkilled that one. And now, oh, what was I going to show you? Uh, right here in Photoshop. Because what you want to do is you're going to have to take your camera out, put it on f uh, 3.5 at 18 millimeters, which is basically the close, the best you can get with your um, setup because you're going to want to go with the widest angle 18 millimeters because what that lets you do is take as long an exposure as you can of the stars before they start to blur um, you know because stars are always moving so if you go too long they're going to look like short lines uh, and if you don't go long enough you know you won't see them but that's why I say I would just try to start at 3200 for 20 seconds um, 3.5 with your 18 millimeters uh, 18 to 55 I think he got just set at 18 and then the first thing you want to do is like you can go out so, this new moon cycle as soon as it, the moon goes away because uh, we're actually we're coming up on a new moon so it's gonna be dark in about a week or so it'll be black out at night if you got a clear sky you can go out um, if you avoid the moon you know the stars are just gonna look brighter to you I don't know maybe you already know most of what I'm telling you but um, anyway what you do go out just start taking pictures of the stars but what you want to do is either put a piece of tape on your lens so that after each image you know exactly where the lens was set um, and then when you get done take them in put them on your computer and you're gonna want to zoom in to the stars just zoom in until you start to see them break up like right there you can see they're breaking up a little bit um, and you may not have as many stars but you'll have these stars you'll have all the big stars you might not get these tiny ones but honestly you don't need them as long as you get all the big stars in your shot you're fine uh, but you're just going to look at them and then go through all of your frames and find the image that the stars look the smallest um, 
Because whenever they get the smallest, the tiniest stars, that means you're in the sharpest focus. And I would stay in the middle of the frame. Because even if you look at mine, when you get out to the edges, uh, you know, you see a little bit. I mean, this, this image here is looking pretty sharp. Uh, and then see, we go to the other side. You know, it's just a little bit softer. It's never perfect when you're shooting. Mine's a 14 millimeter, so it's real wide, so you get a little lens distortion. But if your stars look like this, you can even see, see how they're ovals? That's just because the star was moving. But you can see the edges clean. If it's out of focus, if they're out of focus, they'll look a little bit like this one, or these here. But even these are pretty good. That's like, uh, I forget what the actual term is lens aberration or coma um, you might get a little of that but you'll know when you look at your images you're gonna see it go from blurry to sharp or, or as sharp as it gets and then that's where you're gonna want to set the lens when you're out uh, shooting all your images and you want to test it because you don't want to get back after being out there for two and a half hours and then realize you didn't have your camera in focus for the stars um, and then you'll want to bring a headlight with you, a strong flashlight. Because what else I'm going to have you do is after you get all the images for your stars, um, you know, find the, you know, you'll need a, a, a foreground that's a lot closer than this little island I got here. You know, you'll have rocks in the foreground, you know, or something interesting right up front here. So what you'll do is you'll shoot. You'll shoot about 15 or 20 images of the stars for me consecutively, right in a row. And then I'm going to have you use your flashlight without moving the tripod, the camera, um, or changing the settings. Um, well, I will have you change one setting, but everything else you're going to leave the same. But then what I will, after the stars, I'm going to have you refocus on your foreground, whether it's going to be a boat or the dock or whatever it is, you're just going to refocus the camera for the foreground because when you're shooting the stars, a close foreground is going to be out of focus. Uh, so you'll just refocus with your flashlight and then you're going to change your shutter speed from 20 seconds to 30 seconds and then you're going to uh, just shoot about 8 more images up front here. Um, and that's about it. And then hopefully those new exposures will give you a little better light. And if you have, uh, if you do decide to buy an intervalometer that you can set, I would have you, because I know your camera is only going to max out at 30 seconds. And I use an, uh, an intervalometer or a shutter timer, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'll go three minutes on the foreground. I'll go two minutes, three minutes, sometimes just a minute on the foreground, but what I'll do is um, I'll actually lower my ISO um, to get a little cleaner image and then I'll double or triple my exposure time. So I've got a lower ISO but a much longer exposure time. So what I do is I basically light up that foreground by just leaving my shutter open for two minutes um, and I'll lower it. But that's what I would have you do. Um, if you have an intervalometer, I'd probably have you doing 90 second exposures and I would try some at ISO 3200, and then I'd try some at ISO 1600. Um, and that's probably going to be your limit. I don't know if you'll do much at ISO 800. Um, but I think you'll be surprised what you can get with your camera. Anyway, this video seemed to get a little long, but there you go. That's what I'm thinking for now. If it doesn't sound like something, if it sounds like more than you want to do, we'll just, you know, we'll dial it back. But it'd be fun. I don't have to do any of the work. You got to do all the work for me, and then I just, I'll, I'll put the image together for you. Do the best I can. I make no promises. So anyway, that's about it. Talk to you later. Bye, Linda.